What is up, guys? This is JT, and uh, this is Conor McGregor and Jose Aldo, Jose Aldo, whatever you want to say. And this was from UFC 194 on December 11th, I do believe, or maybe the 12th. I think it was the 12th, actually. And um, there's a couple of key features about this fight that people are overlooking, and I kind of want to go over so that people can see what they may or may not have missed. And um, I myself, being a, an MMA practitioner from back in the day, I don't do it much anymore because uh, broke broken bones really just kind of kept, kept me from training and working out. But anyways, I've noticed a couple key things that people had missed that they did not cover in this situation. And... Uh, Something that you learn in the first week or so as a weight belt is to parry, parry strikes or parry punches. A lot of times you'll go over the left to right parry. It, it may look opposite to you, I'm not sure. And then the right to the left parry. And there's also the down parries and the down parries. And then also you have a high strike, like a, a high leg kick. This is this is the defense for that, or even a looping, basically a, a giant overhand right. This would be the defense for that. And one of the things is, is don't hold your arm touching your... Don't hold your arm touching your head. Technically, kind of hold it away. Because if you hold it right on your head, it's still going to shake your brain. But anyways, um, there's a couple key things that people have missed in this fight. And I wanted to show you this because it's, it's actually, in slow motion, very fantastic. And we're going to look at that real quick. And hopefully I can slow this down a little bit more so that you can see it. But as you can see, um, Conor McGregor's right hand is on Jose's left arm. Now what he's doing right there is he's doing control of the limbs. And what that's going to do is force him to make rash decisions when it comes to striking. I don't know if you've ever been in a close combat situation where somebody's touching your arms, but it's really hard to move your arms for a punch if they have their weight on your arm. So if you watch, he holds that arm, but check this out. See how he's got his hands out like this? He's getting ready to parry his punch. And as he parries that punch, he pushes it down. He pushes it down and to the side, and then immediately cocks his left hand up, ready to strike. Now this leaves his right side of his face because he's faced that way this leaves Jose's face completely no way to block this punch at all this strike is getting through no matter what because of the way he did the parry on the right hand and as you can see he pushed the right hand down and then boom here comes the left hand and as you can clearly see, Jose knew the punch was coming, closed his eyes, nothing he can do. And um, like Connor said, uh, precision beats power and timing beats speed. I don't know if I said that exactly correct, don't blame me, but I'm not going to play the audio on that. But then, boom, rearranged his face exactly like he said in interviews going up to the fight that was supposed to be six months ago or more I think it was supposed to be July 11th so he said that pre July 11th and now he did exactly what he said and the only punch that Jose actually landed comes right afterwards because Connor did not reset his guard he should have reset his guard, and he wouldn't even have taken this damage, which he's going to take right now. So he takes one right on the upper eye and actually gets a cut right above his, um, it's kind of in between his eyelid and his eyebrow. 
but uh, it's not too massive here it is from a different angle you can see how he's doing the arm control he pushes down on the uh, feint that's not a real jab it's actually a feint and he pushes down on it just in case it's actually a jab and it's gonna come through and it doesn't so then he automatically knows he's going to the right hand so he takes his same right hand and parries Jose's right hand out of the way and then immediately you can see him kind of you can kind of see him cock back and get ready for that strike and then boom he's out right there dude is out on his feet you can see his body is leaned you can see all of his weight is going forward this guy is gonna tumble like a tree that just got cut down this dude has just been fell and somehow he managed to land that strike as he was already knocked out that remains a mystery to me and I don't like the way that Connor's leg just did some sort of a weird bend um, hopefully it's fine but he's already knocked out then one two hammer strikes and then on top of that John McCarthy comes and knees Jose right in the face boom knees him right in the face so here's a different angle you're gonna see him paw at the he's gonna paw at the jab hand but then he's gonna realize that he's throwing the right hand and he's gonna parry it see this is a side to down parry and the reason you want to do that is because if you have your left hand out of the way it leaves them susceptible to a counter strike and this is actually um, gonna be based more in Taekwondo uh, karate more of your hand striking martial arts uh, I do not believe Muay Thai uses any sort of parrying I, I do believe they just strike and strike and strike but and then as soon as he comes in with that left I mean it's game over it's lights out so that's pretty much the end and then as you can see he's lights out it's no flash KO like everybody wants to put in the comments section of every single article when it comes to Conor McGregor versus Jose Aldo it is not a flash KO this is a KO dude hit the ground did not know where he was and guess what if he did now he doesn't and now he definitely doesn't and on top of that let's let's get an extra little knee in by John McCarthy boom knee by John McCarthy so Jose took a straight up two man beat down in my eyes so <laughs> he really scraped his knee across there I wouldn't be surprised if that cut across his nose came from uh, John McCarthy rather than uh, Conor McGregor but here we go parry the punch left hand the only thing that I have a problem with is the fact that Conor McGregor was not ready for this follow-up left hand now if he would have missed on his left hand he would have had an issue with dude's left hand and if he would have gotten wobbled or hurt in any sort of form or fashion and uh, guy, guy didn't get knocked out and he kept coming forward he would have some sort of a Vitor Belfort situation ay, 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 so just coming at him but the way it played out was just miraculously I mean I've never seen somebody go to sleep that fast like never I mean that dude out like you could tell right before he even threw the hammer fist that dude was in la la land dreaming about his mom from back in the day waking him up for the first day of school before he's got to go to kindergarten or something like that the dude had no idea where he was and I, I don't care what anybody says it wasn't a flash KO that's not a flash KO you don't wake up from a flash KO and ask your teammates what the fuck happened that's ridiculous and then he comes in with this one which supposedly might have broke his wrist and as you can see it deflected his uh... 
he hit kind of on the wrist right on the bridge of the nose and kind of deflected his wrist downward which may have hurt his wrist and there was some sort of inquiry in whether or not he did hurt his wrist but uh unfor i guess fortunately for him it turned out that he didn't because he's going to be fighting at ufc 197 in march against rda which in fact he's actually bigger than rda even though he's a 145er fighting in a 155 but he is a multi-belt holder in cage warriors which yeah no cage warriors is nothing man it's it's no big deal well guess what lots of people came from cage warriors legacy wec where do you think jose came from he didn't come from the ufc just open up your eyes open up your souls and understand that this dude is legit and then john mccarthy oh here we go and I'm not sure who the dude is right there below him, but he's talking mad smack if you can see it while he's doing that. <laughs> when he's doing the thing, look at him over here. He's talking smack. <laughs> and then he flips him off. It's great. But, um, nah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to do that. But anyways, the pairing punches stuff, that is literally week one week two of uh, martial arts training and you never see that you never see that you never see front kicks you never see um which is also one of the first kicks you learn you never see any of that stuff in the octagon and i say that being stupid because i mean who cares if it's an octagon a circle a boxing ring it doesn't really matter you know um strike forces cage was actually 10 times better than the ufc's cage because it was actually a round cage and uh that gave much more footwork much more space and area to work and it was actually kind of awesome but you got to appreciate the boxing ability of Conor McGregor because if he straight up went into boxing not only would he destroy Floyd Mayweather he would knock him clean out he would knock out Manny Pacquiao he would knock out I don't know who else is really in his weight class because uh, the the stars actually change very often in those thing in those um, divisions so I don't know. He would destroy them all. There's there's no question about it. His boxing is actually one of his best attributes. And people are saying that he would get destroyed by a boxer in a boxing ring. I don't think so. You're crazy. He would kill him. I mean, he just destroyed the pound for pound best fighter in the world with one exchange. One exchange. One counter punch with a parry and then ended up getting hit on the way of the dude going to La La Land. So, I don't know. Y'all missed it. You saw it here. I guess that's it. Thanks for watching.